why don't we talk about Hunden? Good old Hunden. You know him, you love him. I told you months ago that this was going to happen. I mean, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody. I don't think it was. Hunden was officially going to join Astralis. Not in a head coaching role, but as a uh, head analyst. And there he is. There's his face. HLTV were not tipped off ahead of time. They were indeed reacting to uh, the announcement that was made on Twitter. I would love to show you that, but unfortunately I can't because some of the replies are not fit for Twitch. But this is the uh, this is the report on HLTV made by Striker, who's going to play a little role in, in talking about this whole thing and why it's so fucked up. Hunden will don the Astralis jersey a month after getting his eSick ban removed. Astralis has announced the signing of him as the new head analyst. With the move, the Danish organisation says it has finalised the strengthening of the performance setup around the team heading into the 2023 season. This previously saw Peter Castle, Arden Scold, uh, replace Martin Trier, Height as the head coach and Frederick Lummy Nielsen leave his post as analyst. And you will also worth remembering, of course, uh, Castle, he's a, a, a convicted cheater as well. So, you know, just letting you know. And uh, they say it comes uh, a little over a month after Isak announced that Hunden is free to participate in their member events. His ban, which he received in August 2021, for leaking confidential material to a rival, while part of Heroic was lifted nine months early, while Isak's record of it was removed following a constructive engagement as Hunden thanked his lawyers for guiding him through the process. Now, incredible, isn't it, really, that striker who has been so involved in this story from start he can't remember in, in that sentence he goes he was banned for leaking confidential material to a rival while part of a roy he can't remember who that rival was he can't remember who that rival was isn't that weird that he can't remember who it was um crazy uh, just in case you're wondering that rival was actually astralis incredibly wow isn't that wild uh you can see as well uh, it's been a long process but many things we had to discuss in relation to my role that was hundred short statement obviously he knows not to say too much uh now i'm just happy it's all in place and i already feel how much it means to me to be up and running and have talented people around me who trust and support me very nice we may not win the first big tournament but the more we build on this foundation the better we get at preparing and sticking to the agreements the stronger and more consistent we become as a team then the results will eventually come that is the focus for now so initial reaction i'm not surprised obviously look i i was told by a number of people he'd been working with the team sources had said he's working with the team and he's working basically in a coaching capacity as in he is helping the team that is what a number of people told me now remember if there's one thing it is i'm pretty well connected in the danish scene i know everything that goes on there generally broken a number of big stories and crucially i've been all up in astralis's shit pretty much ever since they started and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit because it is relevant to the big the bigger picture so i had been working on this story like on and off and on and off and on and off for a while before i was able to ascertain that how they were obfuscating what he was doing was via oh he's doing content for aim labs which is what astralis have said now all i'm gonna say is this does anyone genuinely believe that he just did the aim labs content he just made some videos and uh, and that was it and didn't do anything else his entire time there Right, like I, I just don't think anybody really b believes that. I mean, the irony, by the way, of Hunden, one of the worst professional players, if not the worst professional player to have ever graced the scene, working with fucking Aim Labs. That's not lost on me, right? But you know, the jokes write themselves there. But you know, this is a guy that like um, was you know doing this type of fucking you know like. I have no doubt he's a good coach. I've got no doubt about it. I've got no doubt he's a good talent scout. And as I said, I've had a good relationship with him in the past before he decided he wanted to be a cheating piece of shit. And not just a cheating piece of shit. He wanted to be a cheating, manipulative piece of shit who took down his fucking former teammates and his former organization after they gave him a second chance. Now, it's also crucial to know that there's a reason no one wants to talk about the timeline or the chronology of events because he was offered a job to replace Zonic. This was ahead 
of Heroic going to Cologne. Astralis were going to play Heroic in Cologne. Hunden took it upon himself at that point to leak strats to Astralis after he'd already been told he could have the job. So he just decides we're going to destroy our local Danish rivals and someone who we're going to play at Cologne on the way out of the door. And Astralis, you notice, they never made a big song and dance about it. They kept them, they kept themselves very, you know, very quiet. But now, they couldn't wait to give him a job, be it through AIM Labs, be it through this, be it through that. And what it looks like has happened, and guess what? I can only say it looks like, because obviously we'll never get to the bottom of it, but what anybody with any common sense who can join dots together, pro the conclusion you should probably arrive at is, essentially, this is one of the first ever examples you're ever going to see of corporate espionage in esports. There's no other conclusion to arrive at, unless you believe in a string of coincidences that just so happen to come from one of the dirtiest organizations that have ever fucking existed in esports. They lie, they do whatever the fuck they want, they don't treat their players right, they, they use any excuse they can to save money, they write bullshit PR statements to fucking try and placate their shareholders, and they're happy to employ you even if you've cheated on the basis of second chances when Hunden's on about his fifth. But, you know, why, why this... Why this predilection for hiring people who've been banned by ESIC. It's really weird. They've hired like three people now. You know, Ave uh, was the other one. It's pretty weird, right? And I'll also just add, for a little bit of extra spice, it's weird how, as we'll get to, they say they believe in second chances. Because back when I did the reporting that I'm about to show you, way back when, when I was working at E-League, Nicola Nyholm didn't believe in second chances for me. He strongly suggested that I should be fired or they'd have to, uh, I think the phrase was consider their position. It's like you were going to boycott E-League in 2016, 2017, Mush. Who the fuck are you kidding? Didn't believe in it then. Astralis didn't believe in second chances when it came to uh, Thorin insulting Device uh, or while he was working a Blast event. No, they used their connections to say either Thorin agrees not to tweet about us again uh, during this tournament or you pull him. And when Blast said, look, could you just not tweet to make it easy for us? Thorin said, that's one thing you don't get to do. So you didn't believe in second chances then. There was no friendly discussion then, was there? In fact, no, you actually don't believe in second chances for, for anyone outside of your orbit, but you do believe in second chances for some of the worst cheaters that ever graced the scene, which to me tells me exactly what your values are. And right now your values are we just want to win at all costs. We'll be getting into that. I'm going to write an article uh, because remember, they're a, they're a traded company. They were traded on the Danish Nasdaq. So they have shareholders now. I'm going to write an article in the next few days, which is going to be a guidance. If you're an Astralis shareholder, I'm going to give you a list of things that you should bring up at your shareholders meeting. List of things they're doing that are actively hurting the reputation of the brand, and therefore by extension, the share price of the shares you own. I'm going to give you a fucking guideline on what to say about t t to these cunts, right? So I'm going to hold on to that for a little bit. That'll be with you in a few days. Anyway, let's try and frame just this part of it. Why was it so important for Hunden to try and fuck up Heroic? Well, don't know if you know much about Denmark. Not a lot of people live in there, right? In Denmark. They have this very small population, but they have a population that are super engaged with esports, right? They, they, they know about it, they care about it, and Astralis are the biggest show in town. But anything that starts chipping away that fucking, you know, market share is bad and i'll also explain why because if you look at like blast and all of this historic and astralis historically even government like ministers and government funds have gone into these projects so the last thing you want is your money taps all getting shut down by the fact they've got to be shared with other bigger orgs that might offer a different value proposition no 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 astralis has never wanted to play nice or fair uh with the rest of the danish scene everybody knows it everybody talks about it that they are nasty people to get on the wrong side of that's just a fact Okay, so heroic, they obviously want them out the picture at all fucking costs. And let's just look at some of the fucking history. Do I have to remind everybody about what happened with the FPX deal, right? Do you remember that, right? Uh, again, I'll, I'll bring up everyone's favorite Danish publication, HLTV. 
right? Do you remember what happened? So Heroic were going to basically get a, 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 enter into this like partnership essentially, where FPX were going to give Heroic a load of money for their for their uh, team. They were going to take them as a five. They only wanted them as a five, and then it was going to be Chinese money supporting a Danish team. That was what it was going to be, right? Well, obviously. Fucking that can't be happening. So what happened instead? Nicola and I home and all the Astralis executives, they basically went and disrupted this move. They did everything they could to disrupt this move. So they, they absolutely weren't going to allow this to happen. And all they had to do, because they knew the deal, and by the way, they knew this via the CSPPA who had been giving advice to the players, they used the information they got through the CSPPA think about which popular Danish players were in the CSPPA they used that information to disrupt this deal, knowing that FPX wanted 5 and only 5 so all Astralis had to do was get one person to jump and guess what, it was Esetag, they brought him in, they bought him, so there you go Heroic don't even get their payoff and now there's not another Chinese-powered powerhouse Danish team they have to fucking deal with. Isn't that weird, guys? Isn't that weird how Astralis operate? So, I'll also remind you a little bit of history. It's important to know these things and remember these things. Originally, heroic and astralis and god sent it was all and and that other fucking i think they were just called norse i can't even remember what the fuck they were called there was a norwegian one as well that everyone forgets about even me they were all owned by refresh which was started by nicola nyholm not north not north it was called like norse or something they had the little fucking helmet as a symbol it wasn't nord of ind you know, no, no, you, you, I can't remember them anyway. It doesn't matter. They're fucking ancient history. They did nothing. So, yeah, Norse, it was, right? There you go, see? They were all owned by Refresh. And what Refresh did, what, how Nicola Nyom tried to get around it, was he said, I want to have all these teams, and they will compete in a tournament circuit, which, right, which was Blast, and it, there'll be player-owned orgs, i.e. the players act as a front, for Nicola Nyholm, but we all control them all. And the way they got around it in their contracts was they said they were a media rights agency leasing the brand to the players. That was what they said. Now, they had actively denied having multiple ownership. And then who emerged but a brilliant young journalist to expose their lies, okay? Because crucially... They owned Heroic and Astralis. They owned the two biggest Danish teams. They had the market locked up. They couldn't lose. That is an important detail. So here we go. Why don't I take you down memory lane? The reason Astralis hate me so much. The reason Nicola Nyon probably does wake up in the middle of the night going, Lewis! <laughs> it's okay, honey. It's okay. Lewis can't hurt you now. Right? I was on their shit since day one. Here you go. Come and watch 12 minutes of Young Rich. This is like a six-year-old video. People say I've aged terribly. Don't know, actually. Before I actually do a live stream, uh, because uh, this refresh stuff is kind of getting a little bit uh, out of control. And today, they've just announced something that I told everyone was coming in January. If you check out my uh, previous uh, videos in this channel uh, if you just type refresh Richard Lewis you'll find them as well um, but uh, we'll take a look at that announcement but that is not what this video is about uh, this video is actually going to demonstrate that refresh are treating you like you're stupid and they're treating me like I'm stupid I, I, I take special uh, offense at that uh, because what they're saying is that they don't own multiple teams, they're just a media rights company, etc, etc. Well, I'm going to show you documented proof that they are lying in this video. Uh, but let's just start kind of with why today. Why am I making it today? Well, okay, they've just done uh, a big announcement. All right, here it is here. Uh, What's still a boomer, though, when it came to doing the, uh, the tech stuff? About but... They're going to have their own uh tournament circuit right and i told you in january this is what they were planning to do they've resurrected the blast 
uh, brand, which is an old school uh, Danish brand that's been around for a while, and they're going to start like a, a, what they call a world tour, and it's going to be at the Royal Arena in Copenhagen in November. The Blast Pro Series, quarter of a million dollar prize pool, and it's going to be six invited teams. Well, I wonder who's going to get invited to that. I mean, you know, there is a chance, I suppose, they don't invite any other refreshed teams. It would seem somewhat counterproductive if they did that. Uh, but let's let's hope, because I don't want conflicts of interest to exist within esports. Now, look, I, I shouldn't need to repeat this, but a lot of people don't fucking get it. I mean, they really They don't. still don't get it. So I'll say it again. You Tell cannot have one company own multiple teams that compete in tournaments why not richard uh well you can't have that because it can restrict player movement uh indeed as i've shown before the refresh contracts actually are very restrictive in terms of where players can and can't go um and the key thing here is that if it was ever beneficial for one of these teams to lose to the other team um, say, for example, in a tournament where one team's already qualified and the other needs to beat the other to qualify, who's to say the fucking puppeteer isn't just going to go to both teams and say, okay, we're going to rig the outcome of this match because we pay all your fucking, we pay your checks, we sign your checks, you know what I mean? And people are saying, oh, but that would never happen. It's happened in fucking real sports. Why would esports be immune? Right, so we need to establish some ground rules and make sure that doesn't happen and say very clearly right now you cannot own multiple teams. Nobody's gonna tolerate that. Now we sir have tried to take a stand against this. And and, and again, I might not be a huge fan of the WISA project, mainly because Definitely of not. who's involved with it, but they've got a few things right, and this is one of them. And we sir, like I said, the World Esports uh, Association. Um they have said that if you want to be if you want to take part in ESL tournaments uh you cannot own multiple teams you cannot do it uh and this was the announcement when they made it uh and when they made it as reported here on slingshot by Vince Nairn refresh said yep we will absolutely adopt those regu regulations regarding multiple team ownership we're going to completely abide by them okay fantastic shouldn't be a problem then but let's just dig a little bit deeper. So there was a report uh, as well uh, in the Danish publication BT. Uh, I'm going to just show you this. Um, and what it said was that they weren't ready. The Danish uh, Sports Association here uh, were not ready to recognize esports as a mainstream sport. Uh, this is the this is the Danish Sports Federation (DIF) as it's called, and they said we're, we're not going to recognise esports as a sport because we've got some concerns about it. So think about this: this is a time when across the globe, everyone uh, else is recognising uh, you know esports and and people are investing in it. Well, in in Denmark, which has this ridiculous understanding of esports, super small population but very engaged in esports big events lots of attendance and lots of interest the danish sports federation will not recognize esports as a sport for a few reasons now one of the reasons they named is they have concerns about multiple team ownership which obviously would be forbidden in sports so this got written up, and uh, again, um, I'll read you some of the quotes. Fortunately, Slingshot have been covering this, uh, because people just seem to ignore everything I say these days, which is fine, I guess. So, um, Refresh Entertainment might be one of the reasons Danish, the Danish Sports Federation won't recognize esports as a sport. And uh, you can see here, they said here, uh, the, the reasons for that were that they don't think the teams have worked hard enough yet. I don't know what the fuck that means. That's, that's ignorance right there. Then they said uh, ethical <coughs> concerns about, oh, it's a game where you shoot people. Also really fucking stupid. And they said they had a concern that eSports in Denmark is commercially run, not operated democratically, which is contrary to the DIF's work against match fixing. So again, sharing the concerns that I've just outlined for you there. And he said there's one company that owns several teams, which he says is deeply irresponsible. Who could possibly mean, I wonder? So you can see here, this is Zeno. He's an old school uh, Danish guy. He 
translated this and gave his views on Twitter about it. And he said, in case it isn't obvious, the chairman is talking about refreshing entertainment that own stakes and teams at Astralis. Heroic and God sent his words, not mine. Uh, because as you're going to see here, refresh came out when asked for comment. This and is to keep it. Steen Lawson said, I don't see the DIF person referring to refresh as he is specifically talking about owning more, meaning multiple teams, which we do not. The discussion about national associations defining esports as sports or not is not really relevant to us. So there you have it, an actual out-and-out -out denial that they own multiple <laughs> teams. They've denied it, right? They have, They're fucking lying. They're are lying. They? And I'm going to show you they're lying. You are? There's a website you can go to. Uh, and this is the problem for them. When you want to do things legitimately, guess fucking what? We can trace it legitimately. Now, if you go... Uh, to this website called cbr.dk. It's uh, the registry for all of the companies that operate in Denmark. And you don't have to have financial statements uh, published in English or anything, but you, you've got to have all of your documentation up there and you've got to show any changes in ownership, right? right gotcha. So okay. let me just show you who owns Astralis. Okay, because Astralis is the big front and center team for Refresh, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. what we know. So look, here it is here. It says it's Refresh APS and it's co-owned alongside City Forest APS, which I believe is the company uh, that the players have founded. Now, this is uh, the ownership stake, mm. Azure Andal, and uh, Stemmeret Igeda it means voting rights. Still can't speak Danish. So you can see here they own between 50 and 66.66% of Astralis, but their voting rights exceed that, <clears throat> giving them 66 to 89.99% voting rights. And it's uh, down here for City Forest. You can see they own 25 to 33%. Uh, to, and then blah, 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 blah. So uh, I imagine this, is, th this number here is comp split uh, into smaller percentages among each player. So that's what it says. I mean, regardless of that, Refresh own the majority of Astralis. Fan Dabby Dozy. So look, you, if you search for Heroic IVS, Heroic, another team, that Refresh say, we own the image rights for this team. Okay. Okay, we own the image rights for this team. That's all. I've cut out all of the names of the managers and founders because it's got their addresses in there and shit. But you can find, you I'm, can go look for this yourself. I wouldn't do that now. But I just didn't it's want generous any of trolls, you, mate. You know, fucking sending hate mail to people or whatever. But look, legal. You used to have a heart, Rich. As of last month, okay, the date of the change was the 7th of June. Refresh APS owns a 66 to 89. Uh, percent of share capital percent of voting rights and here it is in uh danish so you can see i haven't doctored that this isn't this is literally uh you know without google translate on there so you can see the original it's exactly the same as the above 66.67 89.99 voting rights 66.67 so at the bare minimum they own astralis and heroic so they do own multiple teams, don't they? And them saying I guess. That they don't is what we call, in journalism at least, lying through your teeth. Oh. So I've got some problems with this because they're publicly saying, hey, we don't own multiple teams. Meanwhile, on the pa on paper, you do. I mean, you... you so we don't need to listen to the rest of it. Uh, that's that's the gist, right? And so off the back of that uh, bit of... Uh, reporting that came out they had to issue a statement uh they confirmed that like so remember the quote that they said doesn't apply to us we don't own multiple teams i do that video refresh confirms majority ownership of astralis and heroic and says any attempt to deceive was utter nonsense they weren't lying guys even when they were lying i read their words i read their words i proved them wrong this is Astralis in a nutshell. Even when you've got them bank rights on a lie, saying they were deceiving you was utter nonsense. Uh, Refresh founder Nicola Nyum says his organization never concealed its ownership stakes of two of the esports teams it represents. Refresh announced yesterday it will launch Counter-Strike Global Offensive Tournament Series. 
<coughs> shortly thereafter, veteran esports journalist Richard Lewis then reported that Refresh did indeed own majority stakes in two of the three teams it represents, Astralis and Heroic, according to documents filed with the Danish Central Bi Bi Business Registrar. This contradicts a statement by Steen Larsen, Refresh's Vice President of Communications. Larsen told Slingshot Esports on May 25th that Refresh did not own multiple teams. Nyhome, however, told Dot Esports via e email that Refresh never sought to hide their ownership stakes. According to Nyhome, Refresh does indeed hold a 55% stake in Astralis and a fifth and an 80% stake in heroic shortly after providing these answers to dot esports refresh pub published ownership information on its website confirming that it took a stake in heroic on june 7th with astralis following on june 20th uh, the organization is in its negotiations with god sent to take an ownership stake in that team too there are a lot of theories out there naom told dot esports so to set and keep things completely straight we have always openly stated the possibility of co-owning teams but when we started out with refresh we actively actively had no intentions of owning the teams during the course of our and the team's development however we found it would indeed make sense for all parties if we were to consider this as a real option these share acquisitions were executed in connection with our most recent funding round, and we did not have any ownership in the teams before this. That fact is also publicly available. With everything being available, openly accessible and discussed for weeks, indicating that we are lying, they absolutely 100% did lie, or keeping secrets from the world, uh, you lied about it, so whatever, uh, is utter nonsense. So anyway, I'll start explaining why all of this is relevant, right? And then we'll get back to it. So why is any of this relevant? Well, because here's what happened. My report and the subsequent reaction to it and the fact that ES Force had been doing similar things at about the same time where they wanted to own Na'Vi, they wanted to own SK, they wanted to own Virtus Pro. This set off a chain reaction through eSports where people said, yeah, hang on a minute, if everyone owns teams, like and then they're all entering the same tournaments and then they own tournament circuits as well like es force did and refresh did why wouldn't they just rig all the games you could make loads of money from that oh wait what's that you have gambling sponsorships or in some cases like es force did you own the gambling platforms as well meaning you could hide the records of every bet hmm this is a bad fucking thing that bald twat richard lewis has got a fucking point for once so at the end of the day, people said, you've got 18 months to get your shit together and sell up all of your fucking, you know, or you own one team, you, you know, and, and you sell your shares in the other team, or you disclose it, and then you can only enter one team at the tournament. We sir agreed on that back when they were a thing, Valve agreed on it, uh, so that, uh, you know, that was that. So... They were spewing. They've been spewing about that ever since because what Nicola Nyholm's original vision was, well, he's had multiple visions. His first vision was he wanted to control the players' union. Then he wanted to control a league where every team was given to a player within that union and he was the fucking benevolent god at the top of it. Then it was, we'll just give image rights away to teams we secretly own and we'll just play in a tournament with each other and who gives a fuck, right? And on and on and on it went. And every time I caught him out and every time I wrote the story and he wasn't banking on somebody like me existing. He just wasn't at all. He thought esports didn't have any competent people in. I get it. There aren't any, right? But every now and then you get the surprise. And so he had a bit. They had to basically get rid of heroic, and in by virtue of that, they had to give up complete dominion over the Danish scene. Because remember, they even owned heroic before Astralis. They even owned more shares of heroic than they did Astralis. But they would have had it all on a lock. And so they had to give it away. And they had to sell it. And it pissed them off. And they've never fucking let it lie. They have been actively trying to destroy Heroic through any means possible that they can. Fuckery in the transfer market. Scupper in the FPX deal. Now this Hunden thing. So I'm supposed to believe, by the way, that Hunden, after he'd been caught cheating and been banned, was such a desirable prospect to replace... Zonic, it definitely had nothing to do with the fact he was telling people privately behind the scenes he had evidence to get all the players banned. He didn't offer him a job for that. He, uh, him, him giving you fucking uh, strat leaks ahead of you playing the tip. Nothing to do with this job that you'd offered him. Yeah, that didn't sway him. That didn't influence him in any way. Like 
pull the fucking other one. So the big question that everybody should be asking isn't just why would you hire Hunden? It's what went on initially to make Hunden go as fucking rogue as he did. That's the bigger question. No one's going to ask that question. No one's going to look into that. No one's going to care about that. So we can fast forward and have a little bit of fun now, right? So let's talk about the reaction to Hunden. Right, being picked up with Astralis. Now look, Astralis are still the biggest org in Denmark and still got the most fans. And even though they didn't go to the major, that wasn't their fault. You put all that on Config, by the way. Yeah, they were struggling. Config breaking his leg, having that stupid fight. It's unforgivable within the context of, you know, what it does to players' careers. And I'm nailed I'm nailed on right about that. But I will also say they've massively underachieved for a long period of time. That 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 is a highly salaried team. That is a highly experienced team representing the you know one of the biggest orgs in world counter strike but certainly way and above the biggest org in denmark so you know at the end of the day i get it they had to make changes and they had to do something about it so they want to get in a performance team right and that that's all fine but here's the thing you are already struggling to retain your fans because you have fallen off plus l plus ratio so fucking hard that even fans you had a lot of glory supporting fans you were like the man united basically you've gone from being the man united of counter-strike to being a fucking mill wall of counter-strike you feel me you the only thing you've got going for you now is that you're a bunch of cunts you know there's no glory there's no trophies that's where the fuck you're at right so every little decision you fucking make is fucking important because it is going to cost you fans and of course as i said i cannot show you the twitter reaction but i did my most zuma tweet ever i did it was like from an anime and it was someone carrying like someone who was unconscious and it was saying they beaten your ass in the quote quote tweets for real for real i've never done a zuma tweet before but again new year new me right and they were if you go look at that tweet and look at the responses there's only a handful of people that are like saying oh this is good or he deserves a chance or whatever so let's get into the next part right which is uh they have been giving out the most disingenuous fucked up pathetic reactions that you can imagine in terms of people who were saying like i can no longer be a fan of yours you know, blah, blah, blah. Let me uh, let me just get the image for you here. Somebody sent a DM to Astralis, like basically saying, you know, is is how it is. I can't be, can't be fucking a fan of yours no more, right? So I'll, I don't know if you can read that, uh, um, but, you know, take my word for it. I'm going to read it as accurately as I can. These comments were coming on LinkedIn and not Twitter. They I don't think they did a reaction on Twitter because the, the hate was so vitriolic. So somebody said, like, I can't support your org anymore. It was a classic, like, lost all respect HLTV thing. Uh, Hi, Jacob. We're generally sorry to hear that. Uh, Nyholm's post. Right, so this is again a post from Nicola Nyholm has said, he's gone to the Astralis LinkedIn uh, manager and said, can you post this for me? As he writes, it, it is not about the use of the bug, but simply about the fact of, that the story was that the players did not know anything. It still seems unlikely to most people. In addition, we at Astralis have some clear values that we always seek to live up to. We have laid off employees who have broken these values and we will do so again. It also includes deliberate abuse of an in-game bug should it happen under our auspices. So in other words, what you're saying there is that basically if Hunden had done this when he was our our coach, we'd have, laid, we'd have fired him, right? It's okay to hire him after he's done all of that and worse. That said, it is also our human and fundamental position that no one should be punished beyond his, in this case, quarantine. Virtually all 50 coaches who abused the coach bug have found new jobs in the industry. Fully fair, because everyone should have a chance when the debt is paid. The opposite would simply not live up to the set of values we believe in. We do not interfere in what others do, but simply hope that we human we are humanly held onto the fact that we are actually we actually have a responsibility to treat everyone equally, regardless of traditional divisions or the mistakes many of us have made over time. In Astralis, we've never actually had a coach who hasn't made mistakes like that, and we accommodate that. Thank you for the support during the time available and maybe again one day in the future. So again, I just want to point out, like, Hunden was the worst offender. Well, apart from that Zona guy. <laughs> and Hunden did stuff that went way and above and beyond 
using the bug as i said looks like he's engaged in corporate espionage whether induced to do so directly or indirectly or whether his brain thought it would be a good idea based on conversations he's had we'll never get to the bottom of that but what i can say is i think certainly if you're not offering him a job to replace zonic i don't think he feels compelled to leak a scrapbook to his future employer don't you doesn't that sound like common fucking sense so they've given this guy you know not just a second chance not just a second chance and they've completely glossed over the fact that in all likelihood you found a way to pay him even at a time when you knew it was going to be deeply unpopular and you did it in secret if you believe in second chances why the aim lab thing why did you wait for him to why did you wait for his e-sick charges to get pushed back from a lawyer if you believe in second chances why you know because here's the thing you have to understand as well and I'm, and we're going to talk about this in a minute. He was never cleared by Isik. Isik just folded. Isik got a lawyer all up in their shit saying, we're going to take you to court and drag this the fuck out. And they're just like, we don't even make any money. So fuck it. I guess we have to come to an agreement then, don't we? Right? And I'd love to know, because I don't think Hunter made a lot of money in his, his career. So I'd love to know who funded these super expensive lawyers, by the way. Love to know that. Guess we're never going to get to the bottom of that fucking mystery neither, are we? You know, the mind boggles, guys. So that was one response. There was also another from the guy that we just had lying in that video of Young Rich from earlier. Uh, an another LinkedIn person saying, this is a terrible hire. We, we, we just don't like it. Uh, hi, Antoine. Had we founded and run Astralis from a PR perspective, we would never have introduced obligatory physical training for the players, a six-man roster, a sports psychologist, or any of the other changes we have insisted on. Right? What he's right, all of this was hammered by fans and esports experts. He's talking about me and Thorin, by the way, whenever he uses experts in in scare quotes. Not comparing, simply pointing out that PR is not our aim, it is a tool. We will never make decisions based purely upon reactions from media or other, but always try to do what we believe is right. Let's actually assess this then. Uh, actually, you only ever wrap these things up in PR because one of these did work. Obligatory physical training for the players. Spoiler, all top orgs have, have been doing that. What are you talking about? You think that's new? We did that in the CGS, you daft cunt. What are you talking about? That's not new. That You didn't innovate that. This is Astralis again. We're the best. You just do shit that other people do. But when you do it, it's amazing, I guess. We've had that for fucking years. A six-man roster. Loads of people have had it. Guess what? They're generally not successful. It can be good to have a sub that you kind of know and have a stand in every now and then. But, you know, you, you find me a super successful six-man roster, you know, in Counter-Strike history. Again, yeah, you were, you, you were panned for that. A sports psychologist. You didn't even... How many years have we had that now? I think I did my first interview. It was the Richard Lewis eSports podcast put out by Heaven Media where I interviewed the first sports psychologist I, I, uh, that had worked in esports I ever talked to. Guy called Robert Yip. I still remember it. That's how long ago it was. So no, you didn't you didn't invent that either, mate. Um, or, or any of the other changes that we've insisted on. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> what about the seven-man roster? The 10-man roster you talked about that you were going to have in a press release, you know? What about, I mean, you've, you've really pushed the boundaries of success and excellence you and evil geniuses are at the forefront mate anyway that is what has brought us to where we are and this will not change however and this is important for me and you will notice the party line here there is no way uh, i will ever support the notion that a person should be punished beyond in this case his ban he didn't even serve his time <laughs> what are you talking about he didn't even do the ban the lawyers got Isik to back down. He didn't do his time. Now, you can disagree with the time he was given, but he didn't do his time. There is no way I will agree that being given a second chance to redeem yourself is not part of positive human values and good ethics. And again, remember, not only did Hunden do all of these things that we know he's done, so it's the fifth chance, not the second chance. He literally was tweeting and doing things like changing his profile pic to fuck them kids, right? Fuck them kids when he tried to manipulate and exploit someone who's on the spectrum. So, has he learned anything, do you think? Or is he just a cunt? You decide. Has he learned anything? Is there any contrition? Is there any remorse? Is there any apologies, by the way? Has he apologised once? No. 
In fact, as I told you through my extensive reporting, he absolutely has, he thinks he's the victim. That's how fucked he is. He's perfect for Astralis. He's so divorced from fucking reality. He's perfect. Tailor made for them. Do we accept cheating or bad behavior? No, but we just employ former cheaters to help us win. We have been forced to part ways with more than one person due to such incidents, and we will again. But once you have served your time, you are not to be treated differently than others. Nikolai was among 30 plus coaches exploiting a bug. His colleagues have basic, basically all started working again, and that is the way it should be. Best and with respect. Steen Larson, caught lying. So, what I realized was this whole Danish superpower connection thing, and this is the this is the other part to it. I remember when people were joking about like, oh, you know, Danish esports mafia, blah blah blah, because obviously HLTV is a Danish publication and stuff. So I'm just gonna bring up some stuff that's tangential how all of this has been covered. Hunden is unquestionably a bad fucking dude. He has done terrible things for me, unconscionable things, things that should he should be prevented from working with young adults. Like if you have sought to exploit someone's mental health issues for your gain, I don't even give a fuck about the cheating at that point you cannot be around young vulnerable adults ever again no it wouldn't fly in coaching it wouldn't fly in in the world of being a sports coach the protections there are so much better and people are going to go oh, no the coach he's an analyst he's he's the coach <laughs> i don't know what uh, uh, newsflash he's the coach it's not the other guy the other guy's the fall guy it's all hunden it's all hunden it's been hunden since the hawkey aim lab story the simple truth is if if i was if i was a sports coach right and i and something bad on the team had happened and i had an autistic player as an example and i pulled that player to one side and i said right we're getting investigated i'm gonna coach you on what to say yet yeah, uh, fucking make sure i don't get into trouble uh, if that ever got out i would be prevented from working with k coaching kids again ever again and that would be the right thing to do because you have a duty of care for people and you're gonna go oh, but richard these are adults a lot of them the level of socialization in esports is so far behind where people who aren't in esports are in terms of society you gotta t and, and that's before you even get to like mental health issues being on the spectrum etc now nah, fuck that fuck that so that's what your values are by the way if you have anyone in your org who it has any similar health problems to nico by employing hunden you are saying you don't care about them that is your values you have made your choices he should not be working around young people the end i'm sorry that you can't see it astralis i'm sorry that you want to win at all costs i'm not gonna forget that will be going in the article about what shareholders should be asking you i'm gonna write to all your sponsors as well like a little karen because you fucking disgust me and i still got some juice left in the tank for you so anyway let's let's get to the next part so the coverage around this it's been super interesting because I've written it pretty much as fucking straight as I possibly can. But I've, I've not pulled any punches. When I did my last report about Hunden and the whole AIM Labs thing and the cover, I noticed there were some people that didn't like it, right? And it was super weird because, like, it, it was such a normal report. I quoted a source. I quoted a source as having said that they th felt... It was their belief that Hunden was still coaching the teams, working as a secret coach. And they were worried that this could be some sort of circumvention of an ESIC ban. That was what they said. Right? Now, I quoted them because they're a source. And I quoted them. I didn't manipulate the quote. I didn't correct them. I didn't retroactively go back and make the quote neater for the article. Because that's wrong. <laughs> so, I published the quote as was as I would do every time I take a quote. Anyway, Striker from HLTV took, at that time, took particular exception to it. It was super weird, right? Because I've never had any problems with Striker. But this is, this is it, right? And again, I just want to remind you all about this, right? He replied with saying, he is not banned from coaching in general, so are you implying he coached the team at an ESIC member event? And you can look. 
I said, uh, I'm not implying anything, there's nothing vague in the report. It was just a quote. It was a quote from somebody who wasn't me. There wasn't any editorial around the quote or any, any other. I didn't see you tweeting like this when other orgs move ban coaches to non coaching roles. Given the disclosures on your website, this type of thing looks bad. What do I mean by the disclosures on the website? Well, there was an, uh, basically, HLTV was owned by uh, a shareholder. Well, they, they, they had, there was a, the shareholder of Astralis had a small stake in HLTV as well. So just a small one, but it was still there and they never disclosed it. And if you remember when I did the reports on Astralis uh, back when the players were in dispute with the org and trying to get a better deal for themselves, HLTV immediately had the players on to, to, to and asked them about that report. They had Device on and Device was going, well, you know, the, I think the report had some inaccuracies in it and that's not how I see things. In other words, they basically turned HLTV confirmed that week into a podcast to discredit my article. By the way, that article is, is, is like Nicola Niom said he was going to prove me wrong. Everybody said they were going to own me on it, that there were so many wrong things in it and they were going to get me. I'm still waiting. It's like, what, t is it two years now? I'm still waiting, you know, I'm, I'm right here, I'm not going anywhere. So anyway, so I said, I'm not here to defend anyone, I'm just trying to get to uh, the bottom of what you're trying to say. Ethics aside, Hunden can coach, just not at events. But your sources are essentially, so he even acknowledges it was a source. Your sources are essentially claiming he's in a role that would be in violation with E6 ban. Again, the quote was, <clears throat> we are concerned. Uh, it was someone like that, it was, it was like wording like that. Then we went on to this little thing and again like, i've never had any beef with this guy never had any beef you can go and check the history like we barely even talk to each other but you know i've talked to him at events never had any problems just never never until this thing uh and he said there um yeah the role would be that of a coach that's what the sentence means you're clearly trying to imply the report is in some way wrong which uh, of course serves the purpose of defending astralis do i have to remind you about the disclosures he says you're not in violation by just being a coach and then so uh, this is jackson guy how can it not be relevant story that hunden is helping astralis in any way i never said it wasn't relevant i'm just going to clarify a piece of information that's been left rather vague it's not vague uh no 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 and when in the end i just blocked him because i mean like he's a fucking idiot he doesn't even understand the basic you know points of conflict uh of, of interest i tried to de-escalate before that I just said it was, look, it's a minor semantic thing. He, he said, I don't know how it's a minor semantic argument that clarifies whether the report says a coach is actually in violation of the ban or not, which I didn't say that, uh, especially when that's what sets up the story, but fair enough, stupid questions, I suppose. The report didn't say that. <laughs> Please just stop. You've got your terminally online boss going at it now. So in the end, Lewis, my editor, Lewis Mira, because I know I'm editor at large, but as I've told you, that's a prestige title. I'm not actually the editor of the CSGO section. I don't write headlines. I don't edit copy. I just write an article every now and then. I record a video every now and then. And they employ me just to be there, basically. And it's great. It's a great gig. It's the, it's the ultimate lazy journalist gig. I've explained it a million times. So Lewis Mira went in and like added some like qualifying sentence that said something along the lines of like i don't know worth noting hundon whatever it says now basically worth noting that hundon wouldn't be in violation or something like that so anyway the owner of fucking hltv who is a deeply disturbed like i, I don't even understand what i've ever done to this guy but ever since cadred well, I mean, just ever since Cadred existed, but ever since Cadred started covering 1.6, this guy's just been mental. Like, I, I you know, and I, I can't tell you how long ago that beef is. You're talking 2006, and this guy's still fucking going. So, um, because I mentioned that they'd failed to make disclosures on their site, he just lost his mind. Remember, this is the guy who runs HLTV. Uh, he said, what kind of clown defense is this of, of the article? Uh, why don't you ask your colleague, Lewis Mayer, about these disclosures? He was editor-at-chief in the time, but maybe he's still on it. Now, this is all you need to know about these guys and where they're at mentally. Lewis Mayer was a dedicated servant to HLTV for years, worked tirelessly on that website for years, without pay rises, without just basic support or anything, tons of broken promises like every fucking staff member at this wretched shithole website actually gets. And this is how a former owner treats him. He should be kidding in his feet every time he sees him because it's the, it, the only thing that keeps HLTV upright is they have had a plethora of super talented and dedicated staff members down the years who have always been willing to work well below their value and there's still some there now and I'll tell you it ain't striker
<laughs> so you know what I mean? Like, so imagine, imagine fucking digging out. Like, attack me. I think you're a cunt, mate. I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. That's real fucking talk, homie. You, I think you're a clown. You are so terminally online, it's beyond a joke. You are bitter about things that happened in like 2006, 2007, 2008. I cannot fucking express how disinterested I am in it all. Like, it is so fucking pathetic but and you're a grown man you know like you i think you're even older than me mate but to throw your own staff under the bus is fucking outrageous right and then because he noticed that lewis had edited it he said so did you not edit it after it was published how's your integrity these days says mr fucking non-disclosure on his website says mr here's some commercials for a gambling site that promises you will get rich quick if you use it mr integrity himself by the way nomad how's your integrity these days working with someone who would surely have to be in on this astralis conspiracy you keep fucking peddling right well all right let's get into conspiracies shall we so hltv wanted to attack me over just pointing out that hunden might be working behind the scenes with astralis which by the way if you've ever been at events and stuff they they, they, they associate i've seen them talking to the astralis executives plenty of times right so you know, make that what you will. Maybe it's just your old Danish homies hanging out together at an event, having a good time, speaking Danish, having a good time, eating those terrible hot dogs that you like so much in Denmark, having a good time, drinking Carlsberg, the worst fucking commercially available lager in Europe, having a good time. Maybe you're just doing them things. Or maybe you're doing something else. Because I, I find this fucking weird. I, find, I do find this weird that there was an article published towards the end of the fucking year right where the headline was banned reinstated banned again then cleared the hunden saga summarized hmm what's wrong with this picture hunden was never cleared never cleared he has never been cleared he did it all we know he did it all he admitted to doing it all he did it all the only thing that's ever up for dispute is whether or not his teammates knew what he was doing. He was not cleared. And let me tell you exactly, because I know how websites work as a media student, let me tell you this part. This is just some Welsh writer. He's called Daffid Double Zero. He's not a name you're going to see a lot of on HLTV. If you go through this article in its entirety, it's actually a pretty good summary. Never once is the word cleared used. Not once. So the writer doesn't think he was cleared, just the person writing the headline. Oh, the editorial team. How bizarre. How bizarre. So why would you want the world to, like, at a glance, think Hunden was cleared when he wasn't? Why would you want that? That's fucking weird, isn't it? That's a fucking weird thing, isn't it? Right? But then it gets worse. It actually gets worse if you can fucking wrap your head around it. So, I don't give a fuck, by the way, what you do in your spare time, who you associate with, who you talk to, whatever, right? But this is a bit fucking odd, right? Given everything I've talked about, given the vitriolic attacks, given the constant defense of Astralis by HLTV, given the non-disclosures about fucking shared ownership that they covered up for months, literally it took me and Thorin on by the numbers pointing it out to fucking get them to say yeah all right then and for them to actually have a thing on a this right on the day of the news that it came out this is someone called uh Bert frankel who uh if you look on their biography says they've got like little love hearts next to hunden usually indicative they're in a relationship right really excited for this announcement announcement and super proud of hunden now get to work new beginnings which if you remember that was hunden's famous tweet that he did when he was like shaking a cocktail mixer right uh, and then for real this time uh, implying by the way that when he said new beginnings when he was doing a cocktail shaker he knew he was lying all the time but here's the thing she is the account manager at hltv.org hunden's girlfriend is this like I, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm fucking mental. I feel like I've lost my mind. And by the way, if you don't know what an accounts manager is, she's worked her way up. She started in sales and now she handles accounts, i.e. sponsorships and investment. <laughs> so not a small position. So just to be clear, <laughs> HLTV had that whole thing where they refused to disclose shared ownership. HLTV attempted to discredit my reporting about the Astralis organization by having a podcast where they brought somebody on specifically to address my reporting. 
They attacked me on Twitter about things I'd said about Hunden, uh, although things I, I hadn't said about Hunden, things I had quoted a source on about Hunden, so much to the point Nomad, who d isn't even active on social media, had to come out and call me a clown. Then they published an article saying Hunden had been cleared when he hadn't. They also left out that detail in the report about it was Hunden leaking competitor intelligence to Astralis. They left their name out of that part in the report. And his girlfriend works there as an account manager. Well, I don't know, guys. I can't see any links here. Am I fucking mad? This is the state of fucking Danish esports and all the fucking power players within it, guys. That, that. Is just that's the comedy right there. That's the chef's kiss on it all, right? At the end of the day, maybe I'm just hysterical and seeing things and seeing connections where there aren't. Maybe, maybe that guy in the fucking Reddit thread, he spent so long in the mud, all he can see is the mud. But I don't know. I think if most people look at that fucking pile of mud, they're gonna tell me it's mud. Now, I know I'm going to get attacked by HLTV fans. They've been attacking me for years. Danish fans, Astralis fans, all the nut jobs are going to come out after they see this video, whether it's on YouTube or on I don't give a fuck. I told you. New year, new me. I'm eating right. I'm eating beans. I'm full of beans. I'm ready to go. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a fucking call it as it needs to get called. And that is very fucking strange indeed. But to put a pin in the fucking podcast about Hunden, because this has been going on, for a bit now, probably an hour. It's as simple as this. Hunden was desirable for a number of reasons. Even back when he was a lauded community member. Nobody disputes this. You could dig up footage of me and Thorin on By The Numbers saying, Hi back when he was at Mad Lions, hire Hunden to build you a team. Someone should have done it before any of the cheating nonsense could have even have occurred. He should have just been given a GM spot. He's got a good eye for talent, good understanding of the game, seems to be personable when he's not having a fucking victim complex related mental breakdown, you know, and and I've, I've, I've met him many, many times, known him for years. I would have absolutely championed that. But what he did, it's unforgivable in my books. It's not even about the coaching bug. Understand. Astralis only want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the heroic thing that he did. Because if they have to talk about that, you might start thinking about the role they played in it when they offered him the job to replace Zonic. You might want to start looking into the history of Astralis always fucking being bitter about having to give up them shares in heroic. So they're never going to talk about that part. They're going to talk about the cheating and how everyone else has been allowed to move on. Not everyone, by the way, you will notice. And not everyone happy about it, you will also notice. But regardless, they are going to try and sanitize what this guy did using their, and I put it generously, friends in the media... And they're going to attack anyone that's going to give it to you straight. Well, I'm not taking the foot off this accelerator where that is concerned. I can't make them fire Hunden. Maybe there is some argumentation to say Hunden can do some form of rehabilitation. It certainly ain't what he's done when he didn't even serve his full fucking sentence. And lawyered up. And fucking, you know, nobody agreed it was unfair. Nobody agreed anything was improper. All they agreed was that on the basis of entering into a good faith discussion, we now believe Hundun has learned his lesson and we're going to end the sentence here. That was what it was agreed upon. That is what was said. So, am I happy Hundun's back? No. Should you be happy if Hundun's back? No. If you are a fan of Counter-Strike and you currently support Astralis, maybe you're Danish, right? Go and support Heroic. They're a better team. You know, I noticed HLTV again. Weird, wasn't it? How they put G2. They put G2 on the team of the year over Heroic. You notice that? There's, there's this like weird theme that keeps coming up. Remember that? Remember when they said, ah, oh, yeah, here's the three teams of the year in our award. G2's the team of the year. Like, what? Like, which year? <laughs> Not this one. Heroic, on the other hand, number one team in the world at the time. No, nah, nothing. Nothing to say here. Made a major final. Nothing to say here. Won a tournament. Nothing to say here. If you are a fan, if, the, if you're a Danish Counter-Strike fan, just go and follow Go and follow Heroic. Just go and join. Just switch the jersey out. There's so much rich history between the two because of all the fuckery that's gone on. Yeah, you barely even notice the difference. Well, you will notice the difference. The team you support now will be at tournaments. And also, no longer has a cheating rap fuck stood behind them. A few little differences, you know.